Hello everyone. I hope you're having a good time since morning attending talks. There's another one from us. It's on S bombs, and I'm Harin. Oh, I'm Kriti. I work as an application security engineer. She's my co-speaker, Harini. Hi everyone. Um, I'm Harini Ramprasad. Uh, I work as a product security engineer. Um, we just thought S bombs are a cool topic, and hence hope you agree with us at the end of this. Um, yeah, um, just a disclaimer that any opinions uh, expressed here are purely our own, um, not related to anything, uh, any views of our employer. Uh, but yeah, with that said, let's get started. So I want to start off by asking you all a question. Do you really know yourself? <laughs> Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> so uh, don't worry, I'm not <laughs> going to the philosophical side here. Probably worth another time. But uh, yeah, knowing yourself in the context of uh, the software you build and the software you use. So for example, uh, do you really know what programming languages are being used? What third party dependencies are being leveraged? What risk do they carry? Um, does your use of those dependencies really meet compliance requirements and so on? So this is also being emphasized by the CIS controls. Yes, <laughs> one and two, and uh, they're about inventory and control of enterprise and software assets. So why is this reflection exercise more than important today? So this has become really important in the light of software supply chain attacks. Now, these are attacks where bad actors are targeting legitimate third-party software vendors, uh, software that is widely being used in the supply chain. So take, for example, maybe like a popular JavaScript library, which is used by hundreds, if not thousands, of organizations. Now, if you think what would happen if such a library is compromised, the blast radius or the impact of it is going to be massive. It's not just going to be limited to just one organization. So software supply chain attacks have become truly a pain to deal with. Unfortunately, there are many examples of this in recent times. Uh, the biggest one, I guess you all may recall, is Log4j. This is a popular uh, Java library used for logging, and attackers discovered a vulnerability through which they could execute code on your servers. Uh, the most, one of the most difficult parts of remediating a vulnerability like this was actually identifying all such usage of that vulnerable version of that library and making sure you patch all usage and do not leave anything out. And if you think about doing this in a huge code base, if you don't have the right tools to do it, it's going to be really uh, painstaking. The other example um, is the exe library. You know, had it not been for a curious developer who was looking to debug a performance issue, uh, right, a uh, malicious, very stealthily written code would have been shipped to so many Linux systems, essentially enabling attackers to have a backdoor on those systems. So we can see how devastating that could have turned out. So all this to say that it has become incredibly important to record and track information about what our systems and software is made up of. So jumping to what is SPOM, right? I mean, to state simply, it stands for Software Bill of Materials, and that's an example SBOM uh, there. But what is it really, right? So it basically does what we talked about before, which is it lists all the component parts and software dependencies used, so names of components, the version information, the supplier information, if that's available. Essentially, you can think of it like the ingredient list uh, so let's say you're going to the supermarket to check out that new snack that your friends recommended. More often than not, you're going to look at the ingredient list and see if there's anything funny out there that you may want to avoid and overall make a decision whether it's good for you or not. So SBOMs are kind of like that, if you, if you want to think of it that way. It's not, it's not merely just an inventory list, but it goes a lot more than that. And it can help you assess whether a particular software component really aligns with the level of risk you're willing to take. So it has become an essential tool in software supply chain security, remediating vulnerabilities, and in compliance efforts as well. And essentially, it's a huge step towards transparency, right? Uh, now you have a, re a better idea about what a software component is made up of. So this is really a huge step for both producers as well as consumers of software. 
So let's talk a bit more about why do we need SBOMs. So firstly, open source software is everywhere. Um, to quote a recent study that showed that uh, an average software project has more than 200 dependencies. Now, when you think about tracking vulnerability information, which may be present in those dependencies, fixing all of those, and uh, making sure you still meet the compliance requirements, you can see how it can get complicated really fast. I hope your project doesn't look like that, but it's kind of the reality for most. So like we talked about before, SBOMs can help you comply with your business risk appetite. It also helps a lot with mitigation efforts because now many new vulnerabilities out there, you can identify what parts of your so software make use of that vulnerable version and you can target your efforts accordingly. So it definitely helps in a faster adoption of any mitigating controls or measures available so that you can lower risk as soon as you can. And it's been largely supported by the government as well. So in 2021, the US government came up, uh, released an executive order uh, for NIST to come up with a set of best practices on using SBOMs. The CISA org, which is the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, has also released a lot of educational resources for organizations to understand SBOMs and adopt them in their software development lifecycle. So basically, we want to avoid the shock of discovering the ton of vulnerabilities that came with the dependencies you used and taking a more proactive approach on that. So that was a fair bit of talking from me. Now I'll hand over to Kriti uh, to talk more about how can we get started with generating SBOMs. OK, so we talked about what are SBOMs, why do we need them. Now let's get to why, like how do we actually generate these SBOMs. So, there are various tools in the market. There are some open source tools provided by Trivi, Anchor, OWASP, and uh, there are some vendor-based tools and frameworks. But how do these tools actually work? So they scan the application. And when I say they scan the application, by that I mean they are actually examining the artifacts and any associated sources such as the manifests, metadata, log files, source files, your binary files. And uh, we can have this generated in three different formats. Like there are three different formats available which we can use to generate this document. Uh, we're going to be talking about the two formats, but before that, we're going to talk about what these formats basically are. These formats are basically the composition of data you're looking for. You choose a formats, format based on your needs and what is more acceptable with your current environment. Like what is already like the tools that you're using, how, what would be more compatible. So there are two tools which we're going to talk about today, SPDX and Cyclone DX. Uh, SPDX basically focuses more on the software packages and your package level licensing. Whereas uh, if we see the Cyclone DX, it focuses more on the software components, the authorization, and uh, external API. Now what we're going to do is we have a pre-recorded demo for you. We're going to go by the demo. We, we will see how we actually generate it generate a SBOM and we will be using uh, Anchor's open source tool called SIFT. Okay, so that's the demo basically. Give me a minute. Yeah. Is it working? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. The screen is not working. This is not working. But I want the speaker. It's not. So sorry. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, yes, and play that again now. Okay. So that's where we'll begin the demo. And what we're doing here is we're going to generate the SBOM. And now we, and after that, we'll see how we can use that SBOM to actually manage the vulnerabilities. 
we're going to pick up a commonly used image, Nginx image, and uh, use Swift, as I mentioned. So that's the command that we're going to run. And uh, we are going to produce it in the Cyclone DX format that we define and uh, write it to a JSON file. So when we run this command, a file gets generated. You'll see it come up. Yeah, so that's the file on the left side. You see that's, that's actually the SBOM that got created. And uh, it's the Cyclone DX format. That's how it looks. And it has three major sections, the metadata, uh, the components and dependencies. Metadata is actually what contains the information about the image. And uh, component is the one that contains the information about the licensing and the packages. And the dependencies is all the package, all the dependencies of the image, like the package dependencies. There's a whole list of it that you'll see here. Now, what we want to do is, as I said, that we'll use this SBOM for vulnerability management. We'll run this SBOM through a vulnerability scanner. And uh, for that, we're going to use uh, another open source tool, which is also available by Anchor. That's called Gripe. That's the one that we're going to use. And uh, when we run this uh, Gripe command, we're going to get a list of vulnerabilities, as you see there. And uh, it'll have like, what's the severity? What's the vulnerability? And uh, if that could be fixed. And the ones which say is won't fix, it's either they have reached the end of life or uh, there's no fix available for those ones. So we have to look for alternative solutions. So this was like a table format. But what if we want just one comprehensive document? So what we do is we again run the gripe command and create a new SBOM that will contain the uh, vulnerabilities section now. And uh, to do that, we run the another command and write it to another JSON file, which will basically create a new SBOM that would be like the same SBOM that we created, but we'll have another section. We'll just see it now. So we see another file got created. And uh, it has exactly the same data as the previous one. Just one section got added, the vulnerability section. And uh, it's the same that we saw in the table, but in the JSON format. Like it, it, it becomes like a one document, more readable and easy to access. So gripe here is just one example that we used. But there are different vulnerability scanning tools as well outside that you can use and uh, integrate your SBOM. So yeah, that was the demo. And now we'll move ahead to the use cases. So how do we actually use that file that we created right now? That can be used in many ways, because an SBOM is a file that can be used for managing vulnerabilities that we saw, and handling licensing, compliance issues, swiftly pinpointing to the dependencies and supply chain threats in the software or its components. You can make it a part of your SDLC lifecycle, integrate it with your vulnerability scanner, just as we saw, which will help improve the SDLC posture, improve, perform a better security analysis, more targeted security analysis, to be more precise, and uh, give more transparency to the stakeholders and verify the sourcing. Now, if we talk in the terms of supply chain, like securing the supply chain, so. The SBOM gives us an ability to be proactive with the supply chain to identify and implement alternative solutions uh, or remediations if there's a threat or as we saw, like an end of life is nearing. So these are the use cases. And uh, this all looks good. But now what we're going to do is we're going to come up with like a small example. Like we have a small example. It's a very, very basic example, I would say. Just to provide an idea, if we have a production running and we want to include a third party component to it. So we want to assess that. We cannot just integrate to our production. We want to assess that. So to assess that and ease out that process, we generate an SBOM and we get a comprehensive document. We can make it a comprehensive document. Just like in the demo, we added the vulnerabilities. We can add the data as we want, and we can have it produced in the format that we're looking for. So um, let's say we generate a SBOM here, 
which will help us plan the risk management strategies. And going forward, we do the implementation, integration, and testing. And finally, we are at the deployment stage. We are at the stage where we have successfully deployed it. Uh, so we can say like a post-production stage. At this stage, if we create, like if we generate an S-bomb, that will actually help us manage the vulnerabilities. Like, like that will help us stay up to date and perform like timely updates and thus reducing the risk of potential uh, threats. It could be anything like normal upgrades to eradicate XYZ vulnerabilities or uh, look for different alternatives could be like a warning or like a severity is low. So just before it reaches to a critical level, eradicating it. And uh, so what was the main point of this example was, what I was trying to say in the use cases, that these S-bombs can help us identify and address the severity of security vulnerability or patches related to the software components and not just help us comply with the licensing or the frameworks that NIST offers, AIS offers. That is one thing, but it could also help us in a different way. So you can generate this SBOM using the source code during the build time, during the runtime, or during the forensing so on the software. Over to you, Harini. So yes, uh, to summarize with some thoughts, um, we saw how S-bombs can be really helpful to know your assets better, uh, to understand your software's components. We saw how making S-bombs and vulnerability scans as part of your CI CD pipeline can really help shift security left. Uh, but not to say that it's going to be a very easy ride ahead in your S-bomb journey. Uh, there are some challenges we anticipate. So firstly, identifying all components accurately in itself could be a big challenge. If you run different SBOM tools, they may give you different results, depending on how that SBOM tool works. So for example, a tool may just look at the manifest files, but that may not give you a really accurate picture of whether the library was actually used in code. So you may have to try out different tools to see what fits your software profile the best. Second is integrating vulnerability information. Now, once a product is released and you know it's up there in production, the SBOM which has the component information can be considered like fairly stable, but the vulnerability information about the components, the dependencies used, that is dynamic because as and when new risk is being discovered, uh, you would have to make sure you're updating that vulnerability information and tracking it accordingly. So that could be a significant step. And uh, last but not the least is exploitability of the vulnerabilities. Now, when you have a huge list of vulnerabilities to fix, uh, how do you go about prioritizing, right? So exploitability becomes a big factor there. And hence, you know, tracking uh, vulnerability information along with exploitability, uh, exploitability tag would be really helpful when you actually go about uh, looking at the list of vulnerabilities and fixing them. In this regard, uh, I think the vulnerability exploitability exchange, a document, we didn't go about it in this presentation, but it does seem like an interesting uh, solution available right now uh, for companies to track this information better. So uh, I would encourage you all as well to look into it if you haven't. Uh, with that, I think we are at the end. Thank you so much for listening to us. Uh, we hope you learned something new. Connect with us on LinkedIn. You can reach out to us after for any questions that you have. We are taking questions offline. And a big shout out to our mentor, Wade Wells. So thank you for helping us. <laughs>